Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Susan from Tiara Lace Crochet and today I'd like to share with you how to crochet the twisted fringe edging. So let's begin. For the demonstration today I'm using a 4mm hook and a DK yarn which is a 3 weight. So I've started with my slip knot and now we're going to chain 8 just for the sample. Next, ignore the loop on your hook, skip that very first chain and into the top loop of the next chain along, work a single crochet. And then work a single crochet into each chain to the end. And when we get to the end, we're just going to chain one and turn. So there's your first little row done. Chain one and turn. Next, find your very first stitch, insert your hook under both loops yarn over and pull through and also pull through the loop on your hook to work a slip stitch. Now we're going to start with the very first fringe. Next we're going to decide how long the fringe needs to be. So I think the fringe length of about three inches is ideal so we need to double that and we're going to pull up the loop that's on our hook to measure six inches. Okay, that's about right. Then we need to, if I just zoom out slightly, it's easier for you to see. We pinch the base of the work just here and you're going to rotate your hook. So just bring it round like so, again and again and again, making sure the loop stays on your hook. And we need to do this about 30 times. So go ahead, keep doing this until those two lengths of yarn are twisted nicely. Now if you lose count like I just have don't worry because you keep going and you will notice get a little faster at this as you practice you'll notice how that has twisted together and if you release the tension it should twist slightly on itself like so. So that's more than enough twists. Okay, so next you need to just grab this yarn, keep it out of the way and at the same time bring this loop down towards the end of your hook but keep your finger on it and then go back into the stitch that you first started and do another slip stitch. making sure then that you might need to just pinch the base of that loop that was on your hook and then you pull through. Now I've managed to keep hold of this yarn. If you can't do that, don't worry, you just let it go. We can sort that out in a minute. And then I like to do another slip stitch for the next fringe before I unravel that one. There we go. Okay. So don't panic, it will sort itself out. You can do this various ways, just fiddling around, pulling and things and twisting. And there, so there's your very first twisted fringe. 
Next, we're just going to repeat and do the exact same thing. Now you can pull up your loop and measure, but what I do is I look at the length of the fringe and I'm about there and then I think, hmm, just, I guess, I guess, just another half again. Now, if you don't feel confident in doing that, do measure. So you can either use your tape measure or I've cut a piece of yarn that's about the same length. And I can see that I am out a little, so that perhaps wasn't the best demonstration. Okay, right. So now we're going to pinch at the bottom of the loop that we've just extended and we're going to twist the yarn again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As you can see it's got a nice bounce. Okay, so once again, keeping your finger on the loop up here so it doesn't unravel. You might find using your little finger, that's what we call it in the UK, or sometimes the pinky finger, and come back down to your work and back to the same stitch and grab the yarn and work another slip stitch through the loop on your hook. If you need to let go of the yarn off your pinky, don't worry, and then just pull through. And as I said before, I like to go into the next stitch along and do a slip stitch. And if we have a look, it's not as neat as we'd like, but it's not too bad. Sometimes I'll just roll between my fingers like so and pull up and then it kind of like makes it look a little bit neater. And there we go. And once again, we use this as a guide. That's about right. And then we once again, holding the base, extending and just do 30 twists. So I'll do this off camera. There we are, it's twisting up nicely. So back into the base, yarn over, pull through, making sure this little stitch here doesn't let's wait for the focus and then finish our slip stitch go into the next stitch slip stitch and that will form the base of our next fringe so let's have a look how this one's doing you can see it's a bit of a jumble so we can just once again you can start at the base and actually unravel put your fingers in and unravel and just pinch it from the top and then let go or do a little twist and it sorts itself out So if you continue doing this to the end, we'll have a little look at it. So when you get to the end and you've done your last fringe, just you'll have just done the slip stitch back into the existing stitch. Just fasten off by yarning over and pulling through and then snip yarn. And there you've now finished your little sample. And 
and you have a little ridge on the other side. I actually prefer this side, so I tend to have this right side facing when I do the project. If you have an existing project you'd like to add a fringe to, you might find that working from the right side will give you the ridge on the back. So it might be an idea to turn your work around so the wrong side is facing and you work your fringes into the wrong side in order to get that lovely ridge <clears throat> on the side you'd like it to be. Okay, having said that, another thing is if you would like to sew this fringe, supposing you were making this little fringe edging as it is, you could sew this to an existing project. For example, this is a cushion cover. This has already been made, but if it hadn't or you wanted to add fringing on, you could do this with which I would if we'd made it like this we'd just attach it and then sew onto an existing project and you could add a fringe effect to an existing piece of work that you've done. You could also make curtain tie backs using this method. You could use a chunky yarn and get lots of different effects. So, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make this lovely fringe edging and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. In the meantime, take care. Bye.